dollars. But the big story, of course, one of the big stories affecting everybody, because everybody's thinking about this, and there's so much information coming out from different people, many of those have, who have no idea what they're talking about, but even the elected officials and politicians telling you to wash your hands, don't touch your face, even they're being mocked right now because they're touching their face. But there's a gentleman who actually has coronavirus, and he's still tested positive, and he's from, uh, he's from the West Coast, but he's actually a broadcasting guy. He's been in the media business for a long, long time, owns a radio station in Santa Clarita, and he was on the Diamond Princess cruise ship, the first one where there were a bunch of people where they determined that the coronavirus was on there, and it spread because there are a lot of people in close quarters. And Carl Goldman joins us right now. He is in Omaha, Nebraska, inside the quarantine facility, which is supposedly one of the best-equipped facilities in the country because they took them there from California. And Carl joins us now uh, from Omaha. Carl, how are you today, sir? I'm actually doing great, guys. I wish I was in the studio with you, but I know you guys don't want me there at the moment. I'm still <laughs> contagious with the virus, tested positive, but no more symptoms. So I've been healthy other than I still have a, a slight dry cough which seems to go for, with the virus for a lot of people. But, but no fever. I've been fever-free since the day after I got here to Omaha. And um, as you said, I'm probably in the best facility I could be anywhere in the world. So take us back. You're on the cruise ship. You're obviously an Eagles fan because I've seen video of you and a couple of your family members wearing Philadelphia Eagles helmets. So what's your connection to the Eagles, first off, when you're going on the cruise and wearing that hat? Yeah, and I still have the hat on right now as I speak to you. I'm a, a total Eagles fan. I have been friends with uh, Jeffrey Lurie since college days. We've remained close. And uh, when he bought the team in 94, I switched allegiance from the Los Angeles Rams to the Philadelphia Eagles. I've been to both Super Bowls, and I get to Philadelphia at least once a year to get to one of the games. So you go on this cruise, which a lot of people do in the wintertime, and it was a cruise that, that, where did it start? Did it start on the West Coast and go to Asia? Where was the cruise ship headed? Yeah, the cruise actually started in Japan. It was a Southeast Asia cruise. I bought it as a gift for my wife for Christmas and for her birthday. We flew with another couple, friends of ours, from Los Angeles to Tokyo on January 17th. And then we boarded the Diamond Princess on January 20th. And back then, there was, China was still suppressing all their information about corona. So when we left, there was no real news here in the States about the coronavirus. You would have to dig deep down Google to find something. When we got to Japan, we spent a couple days in Tokyo, and about a third of the people in Japan, in Tokyo, had masks on in the streets. So I thought, that's a little weird. And then I did some looking on the Internet, and then, of course, started paying attention to the coronavirus as, it, as the news media and as, the, as it started spreading outside of China. We did a fifth, the cruise was 16 days through Southeast Asia. We had a wonderful time. On the 15th day, after we had already packed our bags to leave, we were coming back to Yokohama and then flying on to Los Angeles. We were told that a passenger who had gotten off the ship in Hong Kong had come down with the virus four days later. We were going to rush back to Yokohama Harbor and uh, work with Japanese officials, health officials, and then probably be delayed 24 hours. Japanese officials came on board late that night when we arrived. They ended up taking everybody's temperature. Uh, our ship had, counting crew and passengers, well over north of 3,500 people. So that was a long process. Some, a number of people had fevers, and so they took those samples. They did the full test of, for the corona and took those samples back to a lab in Tokyo. After the first day we were there of, of quarantine on the boat, and we had full use of the boat that first day, we woke up the next morning with an announcement that we were now going to be quarantined for 14 days, stuck in our cabins, not allowed to leave our cabins for the next 14 days. So now you're in the cabin on the ship, and this had already docked, right? Or was it still out at sea? We were not allowed to dock on day one. We were actually out in the harbor fairly close to the dock, but not, not, not docked, kind of like what's going on in San Francisco right now. So 
So we were out in the in the. We were probably a half a mile off off the coast there, anchored in, and uh, officials were coming back and forth on boats to to us. The second day, they moved us to the harbor, and they had cleared an entire dock area that was now sealed off. There were uh, we had a balcony, so we were able to watch this over the course of the next 12 days. We ended up staying 12 days of the 14 days there. So we were watching dozens and dozens of ambulances, military trucks, folks in hazmat suits. The other side, the media was roped off. There was media out there on boats, media with, um, with helicopters. So it was like a scene out of the Andromeda strain. Each day, the numbers of people who picked up the virus kept increasing. As I'm talking right now, that number's 705. I mean, 705 of us of that 3,500 ended up testing positive for the virus, and I believe that number is not final yet because people are still getting this. Um, and of course, we've now had at least six deaths from from the ship, and there may have been some more now. Uh, now, so coincidentally, Carl, I'm sorry. Let me. I want to jump forward because your wife was on the ship. She did not test positive, correct? And so she was allowed to leave. And I know there was a lot of anger. People were mad at you and calling the radio station and threatening your family, right? Yeah, it was a bad situation. My wife and I, after about day two in the cabin, we decided to go public with this. We obviously have a platform owning the radio station and, and a top website in our area in our valley of 300,000 people. So we chose to go public with it. And that really exposed us to some craziness out there. She had to come back to, to Omaha with me here. She was quarantined here for 14 days separately from me and um, was able to head home on Monday. But it's been a, a bad situation. 99% of the people are wonderful, but it's that 1% out there that have made threats. Uh, we've had to get local authorities into the mix. Mark Jorgensen, who was on the trip, has is uh, being convalescing in a hospital in Salt Lake City. He was getting threats, and they had to bring bring people in. The poor kid, uh, one of our part-time employees, has a full-time job. He had stayed at our house to watch our dogs the entire time. He was a trooper. On Tuesday, he went into work. My wife got back Monday night. He swung by the house to give her some things on Tuesday, told the owner of the company he works for that, he had been watching our our house, and Jerry was now back, and the owner fired him on the spot because he had been exposed to my wife, who was negative. That's how crazy this has gotten. So your wife is negative, and she's back home in Santa Clarita, or is she still there with you in that facility in Omaha? No, she's back in Santa Clarita. So she went back, she got back Monday, and has been is back at work, but she can't go anywhere. She's she tried to get her nails done the other day, and the owner of the nail salon said, absolutely not, you can't come in. So she's, she's now going into work, working, and then going home. She's not going to go to a grocery store, go nowhere. And that's without the virus. So I recognize, we talked about this the other day, and said, hey, when I get back, I, it's going to be like the Salem witch trials from the 1600s. So I decided I would stay at home for an additional 14 days, not even go into work and still work virtually as I've been from here and give everybody a chance to chill a bit. Now, here's the interesting thing. You mentioned your wife's negative, and I saw you the other night on an interview where you talked about you were in this big lab in this big facility in Omaha in the same building you are now in the Andromeda strain set, and then they eventually determined that you were safe enough to move into a smaller, sort of like a hotel room-sized room where they monitor you but you get up move around but you're in that building and they test you every single day right and you have to have three consecutive days of negative tests before they determine that the virus is no longer in you that's correct so i was tested last on wednesday got the they have a lab right here on the premises so we get the test results about four or five hours later wednesday i was still positive this morning they tested me so tonight i'll get the results of that. And I kid around because they, this is so high-tech here, but they bring the results on a Post-it note, and uh, 
as being high tech as tech as it is, I'm just laughing over the post-it notes, which I've been saving and treasuring. So my fingers are crossed that today's post-it note will be negative. So that and would then be. Yes, Go Carl, ahead, Carl, this is Robin here. So, so that would be posted number two, saying that you're negative, right? No, you, no. This morning you were still positive. Right. As of okay. as of right now, I'm still positive. Until I get these results, I won't know that I'm negative. And the way they do the test, Robin, is they stick a swab deep up your each nostril for five seconds, and then one deep down the throat. So it's not a fun process. All three of those have to come out negative three days in a row, so it's really nine tests. In addition, they, they set up this, you, you mentioned the high tech, if I could be anywhere in the world, I am so fortunate to be here in Omaha. They, when 9-11 hit, they had um, an anthrax scare right after that. So the CDC and the government set up three biocontainment centers, with this one in Omaha being the anchor, they have one in New York and one in Atlanta. They never used it for anthrax. They, they used it 15 years later for Ebola for the first time, and they here they had three Ebola patients when the Ebola crisis hit out here in, in Omaha. And then I was patient number two in that biocontainment center. So I was in that center for 10 days, hooked up to monitors, two TV cameras on me. No one walked in unless they were wearing full hazmat outfits, and um, I, as you said, I really felt like I was in the middle of a movie, the Andromeda strain. Wow. Now, I have one more question because there's a lot of it. I mean, there's so many, so many people that are afraid. The way that this is going around on the news media cycle where, you know, it's like pandemic, everybody, and it, they're making it, making people fear like, oh, my God, everybody's going to die. You had the corona. You actually got he sick. He still has it, and he, I know. but he's healthy, right? But, right. And you've been surviving you, for weeks. You got sick. Tell us the when you first had symptoms and the worst you were, what did it feel like? Sure. And I say this to everyone, that if I wasn't contagious, I would have been at work 24 hours later. So for me, and what seems to be with most people, and, and the, the reality is 98% of the people getting this are getting it with symptoms similar to mine, where it's like a minor cold. It's the 2% who are elderly or have a pre-existing condition, mostly attached to the lungs that, that are dying at this point. And also, young kids, very few young kids are getting this. So for me, I, what happened is I got on the plane to come back from Yokohama to the States in a 747 military cargo plane, fell asleep because it had been an all-nighter to get onto the plane, woke up and, and feeling fine. W woke up two hours later with 103-plus fever. So it had shot up very, very quickly, which was similar to what our friend Jerry Jorgensen had. My wife, my wife, who's also named Jerry, looked at me, saw I was flush. We didn't have any stewardesses or anyone on the plane other than a pilot, a co-pilot, and three military personnel dressed in hazmat suits, a doctor, and two members of his medical team. They took my temperature and threw me into a quarantine area they had set up on the plane where there were already eight others in there. I buckled my seatbelt and instantly fell asleep and didn't wake up till eight hours later when we landed at Travis Air Force Base. But during that time, I didn't have any of the traditional things that you get with a cold. So there was no sore throat. Never had a sore throat, never had stuffy nose, never sneezed, didn't get body aches during that high fever, didn't have chills or heavy-duty sweating during that fever. I was obviously, by the time I got to Omaha, fatigued, but that fatigue was probably a cocktail of the virus, the, having been up all night, and also just the time change and what you get with jet lag going from Tokyo to Omaha. We're talking with Carl Goldman, who was on the Diamond Princess cruise ship and is now still in quarantine. So we see you in your bed. You post pictures all the time. You do a lot of social media, which is great. And I, I, I wanted to talk to someone like you because you are experiencing the virus. You obviously are, you're obviously not in a situation where they think you're going to die as a result of this, right? Because you're almost ready to go home once they get the negative tests. And you're going to go right home and, and, and you feel good enough 
to get up and go out of there if they say three the next consecutive days that you're clear, you don't have the virus, will you feel confident enough to go back home to Santa Clarita? Absolutely. First of all, physically, there's no, no question I can do that. I'm, I'm ready to do it. And as I said, I would have been at work the next day if I wasn't contagious. So, and that was, that was uh, back on February 17th when I first got here. So I've been totally fine other than I still have a, a little bit of the dry cough left, left that gets better every day, which is my MO when I usually have a cold or flu. It goes into my, my chest. So, yes, I'd be there. The CDC is assuring that I would no longer be contagious after all those tests. And uh, the only thing is we've been getting, when we expose ourselves out there publicly, 99% of the people have been wonderful, but we've been getting some hate. Uh, and we've been getting threats and some hate out there. And also people are now so free. So, and, and my wife is experiencing that right now as she she's working back at our radio station. She isn't able to get her nails done and not able to do things because people are afraid, even though she's negative. So when I get back there, who knows what they're going to, how they're going to react. So I've decided I'm going to just chill and work out of the house for 14 additional days once I get back there. Well, I mean, that's the problem with all this misinformation that's out there, and people are freaking out because of what the news media is making things out to be rather than giving people just facts. They're really trying to hype this up, and they're scaring people to death. And it's never right to to do death threats. I mean, that's insane. But um, but we want the correct information to be out there. I do have a question regarding your wife, though. Did she ever have any symptoms? I know that she tested positive at one point for carrying the virus, right? But she never actually. No, she, she never, never tested. She never. Positive. So she, she so she, she never. Negative. So she never got it at all. She never got it. That's what's so weird about this virus. So the four of us. That's what's a little confusing. There are two juries in this story. My wife and our close friend are both named Jerry. My, our close friend, Jerry Jorgensen, was the first to test positive. She went to a hospital in Fukushima, Japan. My wife has never gotten the virus but had to still do the quarantine. So she had to come here with me to Omaha, stay where in the same facility that I'm in now uh, in separate quarters and uh, this lower level of care. And then was released on Monday after she had to complete her 14 days and still also test negative two days in a row in order to um, be released. Now, one, one last thing. Let me, let me get to the bulk of the matter because I don't want to hold you much longer. You're talking. I want you to tell the people out there listening. I'm not tell, we're not telling people, don't worry about it. You may, you're never going to get it. But you had it. You still have it. And you are in the process of recovery. There's a lot of people in that same facility, and we keep hearing people mocking the tests, and there's not enough test kits to, 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 to test the entire country. We don't need enough test kits to test the entire country because it's not affecting the entire country. The other ship that I read in San Francisco, I saw Gavin Newsom, the governor of California, saying they're flying the test kits out to that ship, which is still out at sea in the harbor, not docking, and they're testing people there, sending it to Richmond, California, where they actually get the results of the test and then send it right back. So this, that sounds to me like when they know where there's an area where a lot of people and the possibility of spreading the virus is very high, especially on a cruise ship, that they know they have a grip on this and they're paying attention. Do you believe we have enough test kits, and particularly on these two cruise ship situations, where these people are being tested and we know for a fact that they do not have the coronavirus? Well, here, yes, there are enough test, ship, test kits. I'm not clear. I would imagine there are enough for the ship there. We don't have enough test kits for the entire country, as you said, and they're scrambling now to uh, get test kits created as quickly as possible. But the advice I give everyone and would like to share with your listeners is don't freak out with this. Just be smart. Follow the instructions everyone's saying about washing your hands a lot. Don't touch your eyes and your face. But more importantly, get a good digital thermometer at your home because that is going to be the greatest comfort tool because 99% of the people I know who have gotten the virus, and I've communicated with a lot, they are getting that same symptom of the spiked fever very, very quickly. So there's no need to freak out with a little sneeze or sniffle or a cough. Just grab the thermometer, and if you don't have a fever, 
then the odds are really, really good that you don't have the virus. Well, and I've had the I've had the flu before where my fever spiked up to 103 and, you know, I felt like crap for three days and uh, stayed in bed, had a horrible headache, um, tried to keep fluids down. And that was, you know, but I survived. And it sounds like for the most part, that's about the worst it's going to get for people. There are going to be those people that are immunocompromised who might get worse, just like if they had the regular flu, they might get worse. So this is really no different um, other than the way it spreads and how long it stays in your body. Exactly. And the way it spreads is what's creating the part of the epidemic that we're seeing through in other places in the world and what we saw on the Diamond Princess because apparently the uh, virus germs can live on a surface for two, three, four hours. So I could have been walking down a staircase and touched a railing that that uh, the guy who we call Ground Zero, the one who had the virus, picked up the virus that way with no contact with him, and vice versa. I could have had the virus and been touching surfaces, and someone else picked it up without any contact with me. So the final thing is you know for a fact, and the people who are in that facility with you who came from the Diamond Princess cruise ship have all been taken care of, and so they have been prevented from spreading the coronavirus elsewhere because of this quarantine situation. Do you feel that all the people who are on the ship with you who tested positive are in a position where they're going to be all eventually cleared and feel good about it? I know you said there's some deaths on there, but those are probably immunocompromised people. Even without a, a vaccine, do you believe that those people will be okay for the most part, all the people who are on that cruise ship for you? Absolutely. And I see it here. Here we're in close contact with the 15 who came here. Uh, we do a town hall meeting at 3 o'clock every day, so we're all on the phone with each other and CDC officials, nurses, doctors, a psychologist here to, to work with us. And, and um, all of them, we're now down to eight of us are left. Seven, the seven have left the facility already. Two of those, with my wife being one of those two, never got the virus. Thirteen of us have had it, and um, we're now down to eight. So five who had the virus have already left here and are back home and no longer contagious. So now we're down to the final eight. I kid around. It's like the old nursery rhyme, Ten Little Indians. But I, that wouldn't be politically correct to talk about that right now. So well, especially with Elizabeth it. Warren. You can, you Elizabeth change. Warren being yeah, out of yeah. the running now. I mean, yeah, you can't say that. Well, you can Come change on, it Carl. to monkeys. I think the uh, politically re correct <laughs> book now is Ten Little Monkeys Jumping on the Bed. <laughs> there we go. Maybe Ten Little Na Native Americans just doesn't have quite the, yeah. the rhyme to it. I, yeah. have, I have one last question because um, there are some viruses that uh, when you catch it, there is a part of it that stays in your body for the rest of your life. Um, sometimes it'll cause flare-ups like herpes or something like that. Other viruses, once you catch it and your body gets rid of it, you are then immune from it for the rest of your life. What are they telling you about this one? This is still a lot of that's really unknown, Rob, and they're trying to figure that out. They assure us that there will be many, many, many months where we will not get the virus. we built up an immunity to it once we're released. But they don't know if that's going to be six months, six years, or our entire lifetime. So they're continuing to do tests. They're doing two clinical studies here in Omaha right now. One is with an experimental drug, and they did, they're doing that on one patient. I volunteered for the studies and didn't qualify for that because I was too healthy. So I'm doing a study that is not going to help me here, but hopefully will continue to provide clues for everybody out there. So I'm getting additional tests. I'm doing blood tests. I get, in addition to the swabs up my nostrils and down my throat, I get two, uh, three different bonuses, one under each eyelid for five seconds, and then one up my rear end. Yeah. I'm taking one for the, yeah, I'm taking one for the team here. I know that um, feeling, Carl. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, Carl, we really, really appreciate your time today. And I know you're sitting there in that facility and waiting for the three consecutive uh, negative tests so you can go back home. But there'll still be a lot of people, unfortunately, because of the ignorance and the fact that people don't understand. And we're learning a lot, too. I'm not going to knock everybody who's concerned, because if you're in a situation where you're around people that you know have the coronavirus, 
you have to be concerned. And that's how it spreads. And so we wish you well. We really, really appreciate you coming on. And hopefully we'll talk to you again when you're out and home and everything's back to normal for you and your family and the folks in that the Santa Clarita area. And anybody else that's listening in that happens to live close to where Carl and his wife live. Near Magic Mountain yeah, up there, right? Yeah, near Magic Mountain up there. Yeah. They're, you're, they're not going to, like, they're doing everything in their power so that they don't spread anything. So, for God's sake, stop harassing them. Exactly. Hey, guys, I hope I see you in Tampa for Super Bowl 2021. And uh, we'll be cheering for the Eagles and just keeping our fingers crossed that the refs aren't going to be in hazmat suits. Exactly right. Well, if the Eagles are in hazmat suits, uh, you know, at least I know they'll be safe on the field. <laughs> there we go. When Carson Wentz is leading the birds to the bowl and winning the whole thing. Luigi's yeah, not saying much, you know. I mean, we're having fun here. He's a man who has a sense well, of humor. Well, my mic was off for a little while. Yeah, right. I, he's got the coronavirus, and he's t- having fun talking about the Super Bowl in Tampa, which, we will, zingers which will be there. my 32nd, Carl. This will, Tampa, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to meeting you there. And when we go to Tampa, now, will you go if the Eagles aren't in it, or you only go on the Eagles' hour? Oh. No, I'm only going to go. I'm, I'm only going to go if the Eagles are in it. Not if the Eagles are in it. When the Eagles are in it. Ladies and gentlemen, that's the kind of positive energy we love on this show. Carl Goldman, God bless you, sir. And Get well soon. Jason2000 on Twitch is saying, thanks for being a pincushion for us all, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you. you. Take care. Take Bye. care. There he is. Bye. Carl Goldman out there. Sheesh. In Omaha. Omaha.